Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. It seems like there's no escape from talking about Cyberpunk this week. I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Don't make me. I'm sorry, sir. Don't me. I'm sure you're all aware of the issues the game has right now, but let me begin by saying that I still like the game a whole lot. However, I'm still experiencing a lot of bugs even on a really good PC. For console users, the situation is pretty damn dire, and many are requesting, no, scratch that, demanding refunds. The situation with refunds has been evolving over the past few days, with Sony and Xbox offering them willingly, then telling people to wait for the patches, and now it's changed again. The newest development comes from a Sony blog post which explained, Sony Interactive Entertainment strives to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction. Therefore, we will begin to offer a full refund for gamers who have purchased Cyberpunk 2077 via PlayStation Store. That is great news for people who bought it from the PlayStation Store, but it should have always been the standard practice. If a game is fundamentally broken, like Cyberpunk is in a lot of respects, you should be entitled to a full refund. But the thing is, that's not even the most interesting part. Sony Interactive Entertainment will also be removed Moving Cyberpunk 2077 from PlayStation Store until further notice. Delisting a game is a huge deal, and it's unclear whether this was requested by CD Projekt or done independently by Sony. I imagine it's more likely to be the latter because the company recently sent a business complaint to CD Projekt about the game's performance and how they expected it to be much, much better. CD Projekt has released a statement on the matter, but it pretty much just reiterates what Sony said and explains that they are working to fix it. CD Projekt has managed to piss off a significant portion of its player base while also crossing swords with platform holders, which is a dangerous dance. To be fair, some people are having clean and relatively bug-free experiences, which is good. Good for you, man. Keep on playing. But for everyone having a subpar experience, they have every right to a refund after being misled by CD Projekt. Again, I really like the game, and the issues I face generally have been frustrating but minor. However, that simply isn't the case for a lot of people. A lot of people who paid the exact same price as me and got an objectively worse product. Your two options as a retailer or digital store would be to reduce the price to something more befitting of a game with these performance issues, or remove it from sale entirely, which is what Sony has done. The complaints from gamers will be heard by CD Projekt, I'm sure, but the message this move from Sony will send is far louder and will directly affect CD Projekt's bottom line. If you do want to play the game on PlayStation, you can still buy the game on disc, and I would assume that Sony will continue to support it with updates, or you can buy from key seller sites. This practice should be the standard going forward, and it always should have been. If a game doesn't run, it shouldn't be sold, that's the end of it. An argument could be made that the responsibility is on the consumer to know what they're buying, and that the choice should ultimately be theirs, but that only works if you ignore the fact that CD Projekt restricted console reviews. The main argument against that is yes, customers bear responsibility over what they buy, but sellers bear a much higher responsibility of actually selling a fully functional product. Say you bought a car that looked great in the dealership, but when you drove it off, the wheels fell off. Is that your fault for not checking the wheels were secure, or is it the crooked car salesman's fault for selling you a broken product? Now, some people are happy to drive a wheelless car, or maybe even just one wheel came off so it's still drivable at least a little bit, but many people are sitting in the driver's seat wondering what the f*** just happened. That car should either be removed from sale for being faulty, or have the price changed to account for the fact that it doesn't have any f***ing wheels. Again, removing a broken game from sale until it's fixed should be the standard practice, and it should have happened with games like Fallout 76, or Anthem, them all Assassin's Creed Unity. The only reason this has happened with Cyberpunk is because the game is such a big deal. Okay, that's enough of that. I'll finish this segment by reminding you that I do actually really like the game. I've spent about 48 hours exploring the world and doing side quests, but my performance issues bring the game down massively, and the way the game runs currently on last gen is a disgrace, so everyone who's unsatisfied should get a refund. If you're happy with the game on PS4 or Xbox One, then good for you, keep having fun, my dude. But many people aren't and deserve a refund, and Sony is right to restrict sale of a busted-ass game. Definitely buy the game at some point next year when it's finished, because there's loads of really good stuff in there that is well worth a look. And next up, Cyberpunk may be the new hot game on the market, but playing it on PS5 will be pretty difficult, not only because of all the bugs, but because you can't even get your greasy hands on the console. Scalpers have always been pervasive around console launches, but it's been a particular problem this year with some sites reselling the systems at double RRP. Scalping is an area of questionable legality, and some UK politicians are taking action against the practice. The 
motion sent to Parliament reads, This House believes that new releases of gaming consoles and computer components should be available to all customers at no more than manufacturer's recommended retail price and not bought in bulk by the use of automated bots which often circumvent maximum purchase quantities imposed by the retailer. Calls on the government to bring forward legislative proposals similar to those introduced for the secondary selling of tickets, thereby prohibiting the resale of gaming consoles and computer components at prices greatly above manufacturer's recommended retail price and furthermore this house, and further calls on the government to bring forward legislative proposals making the resale of goods purchased using an automated bot an illegal activity, thereby denying unscrupulous vendors the chance to make themselves vast profits at the expense of genuine gamers and computer users, while also deterring fraudulent cybercriminal activity. Okay, long story short, no reselling above RRP, no buying in bulk by bots. I like that. This motion is supported by 28 signatories, predominantly from the SNP or Scottish National Party. Currently, this is only a motion, so it doesn't mean anything yet, but legislation like this can be very tricky. There's a delicate balance to be struck between restricting excessive reselling at the expense of consumers versus putting strict regulations on the market and taking away people's right to choose. Don't get me wrong, I certainly don't like scalpers, and we spent a whole podcast talking about it, and most people don't like them either, but I'm not sure fully criminalizing it is exactly the way to go. That could create problems for people who bought a single console and just want to sell it because maybe they just don't really want to play it anymore. They should be able to charge what they want and if people don't want to pay that much then no one should buy it which will force the price down. In terms of using bots to bulk buy, yeah nah that shit can stop right now. Using a bot to buy one or two for personal use I think is pretty fair but buying hundreds at a time faster than is physically possible for any human is some seriously shady stuff. If you really want scalpers to lower their prices all you need to do is stop buying from them. If no one buys from them then they won't be able to charge so much and they'll have to bring their prices down. Scalping absolutely sucks and fuck those guys who are being really manipulative, but there are legitimate ways to resell products and I worry that this kind of legislation may harm that. I mean, maybe I'm worrying for no reason at all, but we'll have to wait and see if any of this actually gets some traction in Parliament. And finally, Capcom has recently hit with a huge hack which caused loads of information to be spilled onto the internet. But this time, these new images weren't stolen from Capcom, they were actually shared officially. These new images are from the upcoming Resident Evil Village game which is due out sometime next year. Continuing the story from Resident Evil 7, which served as a soft reboot for the franchise, these images are far from the zombies we used to know. One of the images is much more like a werewolf than anything the franchise has seen before, and I think we caught a glimpse of this creature in one of the recent trailers. Another screenshot looks less like a werewolf, but he still looks like your girlfriend's winter legs. And every last inch of me's covered with hair. Finally, there's a simple wide shot with an ominous castle with some birds flying towards it. This castle is meant to be an important location for Resident Evil Village, in addition to, presumably, the village itself. The game currently has no official release date beyond sometime in 2021, though it was shared recently after the aforementioned leak, but you can look that one up for yourself. Resident Evil 7 was a brilliant shake-up to the franchise, and personally, I can't wait to see what Village has in store. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no-shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash prettygoodgaming. That's all for today. I've been Henry Cooper. Bye for now.